Hey, what's going on, motherfuckers? It is I, Roy DeLuca. <laughs> A.K.A. the Beast of Death Metal, Demigod of Coitus, the Consensual Rapist, the Devil's Stepnephew, Freelance Wedding Videographer, and Frontman slash Lead Guitarist for the most brutal death metal band on the face of the planet, Sex Avern. So, I get a lot of fan mail asking things like, Oh Roy, when's the next album coming out? Or, Oh Roy, how did you get so good at guitar? Or, Oh Roy, thank you for your interest in our company, but we've elected to pursue another candidate. <sighs> Fame has its drawbacks, my friends. But the most common question I get is how I dial in my impeccable guitar tone for Sex Haven. As you know, Sex Haven's tone is legendary. <laughs> brutality of our sound is so menacing that it has been known to cause scar tissue in the entrails of most preteens, and a good majority of Catholics as well. So I thought I would do my best to share with you how it is I get that perfect signature sex having sound for you fuckers at home. Let us begin. Uh, so the first thing you gotta do is open up Pro Tools. Um, I guess if you don't have Pro Tools, you can use another inferior DAW, DAW, D-A-W, meaning Digital Automatic Workflow. But if you want to sound like me, go, go get Pro Tools. It's gonna prompt you to set up your session, and you'll want 24-bit, 48 kilowatts, and then you're gonna want to title it. And, uh, this stage gets widely overlooked by most musicians, both professional and amateur. But you gotta have, like, a really evil and brutal song title in order to achieve the proper sound. Most people argue that it doesn't color your tone, but it does. So we'll give it a cool name. Uh, uh, gasoline, vagina, combustion, birth. Okay, yeah. Uh, I mean, that'll do for now. I'll probably change it to something more ferocious later. But if Sex haven't played some kind of coffee shop, R&B, fart pop, I suppose this would suffice. Okay, now go up here to the top bar and f***ing add a new stereo track to your edit window. This track is where we're going to record our guitar part. And another thing to add, some bands may set up a preliminary mix to ship out to a professional audio engineer who then ship that out to a mastering house. Bottom line is, professional mixers hate an unorganized cluster f of a mix. So we must name our tracks appropriately. So we'll just name our track here. Sherman. There we go. That's a nice name. Once I've done this, it's time to pick out an amp sim. But not just any amp sim. THE amp sim that delivers that sweet boner popping crunch that sex having demands. You'll want to load this bad boy. I call it the DeLuca Molster X7300. I named it the Molster because the tone I get from it digs so deep, it's subterranean. You know, kind of like a mole. Like a mole monster. Hence, the Molster. Before I built this savage sonic sex offender, there wasn't one single amplifier on the market that was capable of capturing the brutality I needed. I've tried everything, from JVMs, thrashers, rectifiers... <sighs> no, sound like f***ing two effeminate dolphins having an argument. Perhaps if I was some kind of prepubescent Mesoamerican pan flute virtuoso, I'd plug into a 5150. You wanna sound like me? You'll need something that'll conceal your ass and your genitals into one gelatinous rotting wad of tissue. So, I salvaged some components from old amps I had lying around, dug through some junkyard scraps, quote unquote borrowed the battery from my dad's car, you know, worked my magic, and brought the X7300 into this world. The amp sim you're looking at now is an exact digital replica of the real thing sitting in my basement. The problem I have with the beast is that I seldom have enough money to cover the cost of diesel it requires to run. 
In fact, that's why Sex Haven's been a little delayed with some of the new material. Its fuel tank is usually empty, ergo. I've had to devote some time to creating the Amsim equivalent to the real thing. I know what you're thinking, Roy. How can we get your signature sound if we don't have your amp plug-in? Well, if you must know, you can purchase a temporary license to use this very amp plug-in in your DAW for the amicable price of... <clears throat> $250,000. Now, once you have the molster loaded, you can just f around with the dials. It doesn't really matter because they don't do anything. Actually, I'm going to backtrack when I said this plugin is an exact replica of my real amp because there are two things that are different. First off, in the plugin version, the Mayhem switch kind of acts as an overdrive boost, but on the real X7300, the Mayhem switch unleashes a radioactive pulse that may or may not compromise the well-being <coughs> of the biological makeup of everyone in the room. It makes the guitar sound really good. Secondly, while my actual amp does have a little on switch, the real way to start it is through a pull cord on the back of the head. It usually takes a few tries, but for the sake of saving time, the plug-in version's on switch is just a bypass toggle. See? Now then, I've got my guitar here plugged directly into the headphone jack, into my computer here. Pro tip, by the way, the media wants you to believe you need to buy a really f***ing expensive interface in order to take your dry guitar signal and put it into your workstation. Take it from me, the professional. That's completely unnecessary. That's just capitalism taking advantage of your slutty wallet and your dumb ass. I mean, come on, motherfuckers, how dumb do you think I am? So, you're plugged in. The molster is armed. Now you gotta click on the little red button here till it blinks red. Then you should be able to hear your guitar. Yeah, that's good. Um, I gotta tell you guys something. The guitar I have in my possession is currently only equipped with the top three strings. Not to worry, bitches. We can still capture that sweet, raging, deep, cavernous chug. You'll be salivating from the tip of your dick like Pavlov's paunchy pooch. The reason I'm short on strings at this juncture is because our bassist has fallen on some hard times. And he's had to sell off his bass strings. So naturally, I gave him my bottom three strings to get by. Actually, you know what, let me explain in detail. Our bassist, as of last month, went to the doctor to check out this weird growth on his taint, right? Which he first asked me to check out. And WebMD was a little ambiguous on the prognosis. And I thought to myself, it looks a little swollen. But if I just go into the kitchen and find a butter knife or something, then I can just drain the motherfucker and I'm really So... By the time he settled out of court, he had enough money to cover the cost of his vet bill, but he still didn't have enough to cover the cost of the abortion. Long story short, he sold all of his bass strings, but sh we have an album to record, so now he's brandishing my bottom three strings, okay? F what was I doing? Alright, oh, Pro Tools. Um, okay, so I'm plugged in. I hear something coming from my speakers, which is a good sign. Um, so I'll just, I'm gonna play something for you guys just to get the ball rolling. Something really metal and I just, I don't really have a riff in mind, so I'll, uh, I'll just wing it, I guess. And, uh, I'll give you guys a taste of the inner workings of my creative process. Yep, completely making it up. It's gonna be real brutal, so here we go. That sounds good. We got a long ass way to go though. If it were that easy to sound like sex having, then damn. Everyone would just be f***ing ejaculating excellence like yours truly. Anyway, we have to fine tune this crap with some more processing. I've given you the goddamn slab of stone. It's time to carve out this f***ing work of art. I'm gonna go ahead and load another custom plugin I've developed. Kinda like the Molster. It's modeled after a fuzz pedal I built. I've made some custom presets that I found worked for me. And let me show you what this pedal sounds like with the settings I like best. Ah, God, hang on. 
Okay, now. <clears throat> Tasty. Here it is, my past again. Yeah, now we're getting close. Um, let me go a little further in depth what the pedal actually does. I have the girth and filth knobs all the way up. Um, it's a little hard to explain what these knobs do. Girth makes it sound kind of like dirt, 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 dirt. But filth sounds a little more like dirt, 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 dirt. And, uh, grime here is almost all the way up, but not quite. That sounds more like dirt, 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 dirt. And the reason I don't have this all the way up is because this pedal is really f***ing temperamental. I mean, here, I'll show you. Ew. I, I can't even put into words. Then if I do this... Weak. I didn't realize Sex Heaven was a disco Disney princess tribute band. So yeah, I leave the grime right about here, and that sounds about right. Yeah, that's good. And just to be sure I have the filth truly set to where I want it, I'm just gonna tweak it a little bit. Hmm, yeah, I liked how it was before. Um, oh! Also, this fader down here controls the output volume. But you'll want to be careful when adjusting this. Admittedly... It's a little faulty. It has a tendency if I fade it too far, then... F okay, so... <clears throat> I'm back here again. I had to re-record the riff because I forgot to save. And I uh, don't really remember how it went. So I, I think this is how it went. I think that's pretty close. So here's the riff with the bare pube setting from before. Fuck. Not bad. Um, now, it sounds great, but we're not done yet. We have to do the fine tuning so the track is ready to comfortably coexist within the full mix. Usually I do these last steps once I have, you know, the drums and the bass parts recorded and stuff, but I won't get to that today. So I'm just gonna show you what I do to polish this shit. Open up the equalizer over here. I specific- What do you want? Get out of here, Dave. I already fed you today. Get the f*** out of here, I'm giving a tutorial! Here, have some Tylenol. Now get the f*** out of here. Uh, anyway, most of you tone-deaf amateurs think you can just pick a basic stock EQ to tweak your tone. And I'm here as a certified professional to tell you that if you fall into that trap, your music will doom your virginity forever. Slutty groupies at rock shows are gonna hear your music, and they'll come flocking to me. Because I use the right EQ plugin when I enhance the mix. And those sluts will know the difference. Their parched p***s will know the difference when they hear your comical excuse of a guitar tone. I encourage you to purchase this plugin. It gives me a killer tone. Hands down, the best EQ on the market. And I would know because I created it myself. And it's available for the low, low price of $4,000 plus a minor processing fee with every use. But, you know, when your cantankerous wife comes storming in the room with a credit card bill in one hand and your famished newborn child in the other, you don't have to tell her a goddamn thing. Just play her the riff you've recorded, you're filtering using the EQ Brute, and watch her panties f***ing fly off her body and into your mouth. Once you open the plugin, you're basically just gonna crank f***ing everything. I mean, all the way up. Ah, oh, f*** it. 
It honestly baffles me as a professional musician why nobody just maxes all these bad boys out. I mean, isn't the point to be loud? How do you expect to dominate the sonic spectrum when you don't step on the damn gas? Now, check out what we got. Yeah! See these meters? That's a good sign. Red is good. Red is the color of the devil. Red means you finally reached some semblance of brutality. Good job! Pardon me. I don't know what came over me. Finally, there's one last step, and that's compression. Which makes very little sense to me, but I do it anyway. So I'll just go over to this. And this is the only plugin. I'm not really picky about the specific make and model. You can use whatever you want. But I have Crippling Compressor. I like it, because I made it. And it's a real simple plugin. It's only got one big f***ing dial here, so it's really easy to operate. But uh, if you're using this particular plugin, once you've reached this part, don't even f*** with it. I'm serious. I mean, I know it looks harmless, but... Sh Last time I messed with this dial, my uncle died. So just f***ing leave it, alright? Boy, oh boy, that sounds mighty tasty. So, that's just... That's it. That's the secret recipe for this mouth-watering ear pie. Let's check out the whole before and after. Well, folks, that about wraps it up. This has been Roy DeLuca's ultimate guide to capturing the perfect guitar tone. I hope this was helpful for you home recording amateurs out there. And for some of you professionals out there too. I'm sure you've been chomping at the bit to learn my secrets. So yeah, here you go. Thanks for watching. Go f*** yourself.